All right, let's take a run at uh, Aries Manufacturing and their job order cost system. One of the toughest parts about these problems is keeping track of the jobs. This company, we're, we're going to be talking about four jobs. There's job number 23, which is already done and sitting in finished goods. There's job number 25, which they'd started on previously. Job number 26, which they began and finished during January. And job number 27, which is sitting in ending work in process. It might help to keep the job straight to look at the job order cost sheets that we're going to finish here. Job 23 was done previously. It's completed. It's sitting in our finished goods inventory waiting to be sold. And it will be sold during January. Job number 25, we started in December. So there are some costs already assigned to this job. We're going to finish it in January. And we're going to sell it. Job number 26, we're going to start and finish during January, but we're not going to sell it. So it's going to be sitting in finished goods inventory waiting to be sold at the end of January. And job number 27, we're going to start but not finish. So it should end up with its cost and ending work in process that we're still working on at the end of January. So the problem gives us a bunch of facts about job number 23, which is already done, and the work that we did on job number 25 so far, new materials that are bought, overhead, and uh, the direct materials. And the first thing it does is it tells us we're going to use direct labor hours to assign overhead into work in process and to individual jobs. It tells us that the total overhead costs for the year are estimated at $450,000 and that direct labor hours for the year are estimated at 20,000. So why don't you pause this video and see if you can come up with the overhead application rate. I hope you got it. $450,000 estimated overhead for the year divided by 20,000 direct labor hours per the year means that we're going to apply overhead. We're going to take dollars out of overhead and move it into work and process. We're going to take dollars out of manufacturing overhead and apply it to specific jobs at the rate of $22.50 per direct labor hour. Different companies are going to have different rules. Uh, different companies for, are going to have different rules for different products. And in fact, we're going to later on encourage companies to have multiple rules called activity-based costing so we can do the best job possible of applying overhead to specific jobs. All right, so it tells us that they started with $5,000 balance in raw materials. That's an inventory account, so it would have a debit balance. First thing that happens is it tells us they buy $46,000 of raw materials on account. So we really don't care too much about whether they pay cash, whether they're going to pay later. What we're focused on is taking numbers from the left-hand side T accounts out here to cost of goods sold. So we debit raw materials for $46,000 and credit accounts payable for $46,000. Next it tells us they use the account factory labor, which means they're going to include not only direct labor, the people working hands-on on whatever they're making, and the indirect labor, that's the folks who are supervising them or uh, inspecting the stuff. They're all going to get lumped into factory labor, and it tells us that our factory labor costs are $31,900. $7,000 of that is payroll taxes. So we're going to debit factory labor for the total and credit wages payable for $24,900 and the payroll taxes payable for $7,000. All right, and later on, we're going to take indirect labor out of here and move it into here. Later on, we're going to take indirect materials out of here and move it into here. Next, it tells us about manufacturing overhead costs incurred debits to manufacturing overhead. Indirect materials of 10,000, that's going to come out of raw materials down to here. Indirect labor, 7,500, that's going to come out of here and down into here. Depreciation, remember, debit depreciation expense, credit accumulated depreciation. Well, we might instead debit manufacturing overhead and credit accumulated depreciation. And others are just payables for other things that are included as our product costs, but aren't direct materials and aren't direct labor. So we lump them into manufacturing overhead. So here's the indirect materials coming out of raw materials going into manufacturing overhead. Here's the indirect labor coming out of factory labor and going into manufacturing overhead. Here's the depreciation expense, debit manufacturing overhead instead of depreciation expense and credit accumulated depreciation. And here's the other overhead, debit uh, manufacturing overhead for 11,000 credit accounts payable. Maybe it's utilities uh, on the factory. So we owe $11,000. Again, 
these accounts aren't so important. It's these T accounts flowing through work and process into finished goods into cost of goods sold that we're concerned about. Then we check with Ralph, who's in charge of the materials storage area, and he says that during the month, people signed out $5,000 of materials for job 25, 15,000 for job 26, and $13,000 for job 27. So we take $33,000 out of raw materials and move it into work in process. Remember this $25,000, this is that job number 25 that we started on before January, but hadn't yet finished. So, so far in work in process, we've got that job and we've got our materials. Now let's move over our labor. We look at the time cards and we see job 25 at 3,000, 26 at 12,000, and job 27 had $9,900 of direct labor hours. So that's a total of 24,900 that comes out of factory labor and goes in a working process. I'm a little troubled that this doesn't zero out, but it's off by a few hundred bucks. Let's just skip that for now. So now we've got in working process our materials and our labor. All we have to do is move our overhead. Well, materials, we can talk to Ralph. Uh, as far as labor goes, we can look at their time cards, manufacturing overhead. We have to use our overhead application rate. So we know our total direct labor hours are 1,660. So we multiply that times 2250. And again, we could have used anything. We could have used direct labor costs. We could have used machine hours. We could have used kilowatts of electricity. But this particular company for this particular product, for these particular jobs, wants to use direct labor hours. So for 1,660 direct labor hours, we're going to move over $22.50. And that means we're going to credit manufacturing overhead for $37,350 and debit working process for $37,350. So we're taking all these costs, moving them into working process. This is like the factory floor. We're working on them, and then we're going to finish them. So now that we've done the big picture journal entries, let's break this down by job. The facts tell us that during January, job 25 got assigned $5,000 worth of direct materials. We got that information from Ralph. And $3,000 of direct labor, we got that information from the time cards. And it tells us that 200 labor hours were used on this project. So 200 labor hours times $22.50 means job number 25 got assigned $4,500 worth of overhead. So all we have to do is total this up now that job number 25 is finished to get the total cost of the job. It's a completed job, so we can total these things up. Materials are a total of 15,000, labor is a total of 9,000, and manufacturing overhead is a total of 13,500 for a total cost of 37,500. How much are we gonna sell it for? More than 37,500. Do the same thing for job number 26, except there were no previous costs. It got started and completed in January. So we know the total cost of that job is $45,000. We'll do the same thing for job 27, except it isn't finished yet. So it's going to be in our ending work in process T account. And we haven't got anything to total yet because we haven't quite finished that job. So let's finish up the T accounts. Jobs 25 and 26 got done. So that money is going to come out of work in process going to finished goods. Jobs 23 and 25 were sold. So they're going to come out of finished goods and go into cost of goods sold. So job number 25 and job number 26 were completed. Job 25 costs us $37,500. Job 26 costs us $45,000. So we're going to take $82,500 out of work and process and move it into finished goods. Jobs number 23, which also costs us $45,000, and job number 25, which costs us $37,500, are going to get sold. So they're going to go from finished goods to cost of goods sold. So we're going to take $82,500 out of finished goods and move it into cost of goods sold. And they're sold on account. So the booking the sales of the jobs, debit accounts receivable for $65,000, credit sales for $65,000. That's the sale of job number 23. Debit accounts receivable for $74,000. Credit sales for $74,000. That's the sale on account for job number 25. All right, then let's go back and look at the balances of some of these accounts, see if we can uh, cement our understanding. This 8,000 raw materials, that's in Ralph's storage area. That's materials to get started on next month's work. What's this 37,750 that's on the factory floor? Well, that's our job number 27. Remember, we started it, but we didn't. 
We spent 13,000 on materials, 9,900 on labor, and $14,850 worth of overhead was applied, but we didn't finish that job. It's still in process. What's this $45,000 left in finished goods? Well, that's our job number 26. Remember, we started it and finished it during January, but it hasn't been sold yet, so it's sitting in our inventory waiting to be sold. What's this balance of $500 in factory labor? It's a typo from the book. I wouldn't worry about it. But what's this balance of $33,150 in manufacturing overhead? It means that we underapplied overhead during the month. We incurred $40,500 worth of overhead costs, but using our rule of $2,250 per direct labor hour, we only applied $37,350. Next month, hopefully, we'll overapply and it will all even out. If it does not, at the end of the year, we'll take whatever balance is in manufacturing overhead and close it into cost of goods sold. If it's a big enough balance, we'll sprinkle some of it into cost of goods sold, finished goods, and work in process to get an accurate picture of what it costs us to make our stuff. 